Welcome to WMNF 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan. Open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act's health insurance marketplace began on November 1st. Today, we're going to talk about how you can get help from an Obamacare navigator to find out if you're eligible for financial assistance and to choose the plan that's best for you. So joining us right now by Zoom is Katie Rodgers turner the Executive Director of Tampa Family Healthcare Foundation. Welcome back to WMNS Tuesday Cafe, Katie. Thank you so much for having me. It's, a, it's great to be here. We really appreciate the support and getting the word out about open enrollment. Yeah, I'm glad you could join us because I'm sure our listeners have a lot of questions about how they can get affordable uh, health care because it's on everyone's mind, of course, uh, with, with the economy the way it is, saving any bit of money you can, but especially on something that's as volatile and expensive typically as health care, health insurance. So thanks so much for coming on the show. So remind people, what is the Affordable Care Act's marketplace and why there's an open enrollment period? Absolutely. So the health insurance marketplace is a one-stop shop on healthcare.gov to apply for healthcare coverage and then comparing uh, different carriers side by side, which is really important because we have six carriers in the Tampa Bay area and there's over 170 plans to choose from. It's great because there's so many options, but it's really important to take the time to look and see what's going to be the best coverage for you and your family. Open enrollment began November 1st. How long do people have during open enrollment? So the deadline to apply for coverage that begins on January 1st is December 15th. The last day to apply for coverage for 2023 would be January 15th. You mentioned that there's 170 plans. So that does sound like a daunting uh, endeavor if you're all by yourself. If you have no help in, in picking out a plan, how, am I, how in the world would I choose from these 170 plans from these six different carriers? But the good news is that organizations like yours are out there. They're government funded. It's not something that, that people have to worry about that you're making a, a huge profit or that they're going to have to cough up a lot of money to, to get your help. So tell people about what kinds of of um, assistance that your group offers and other groups in the area. Absolutely. So the Family Healthcare Foundation, we're a nonprofit and we've been in Tampa Bay for almost 25 years. Our vision is that every person in Tampa Bay has equitable access to affordable quality healthcare to ensure a healthy, vibrant community. So as a nonprofit, we're generously funded by the Children's Board of Hillsborough County, USF College of Public Health, Hillsborough County, and Florida Healthy Kids Corporation to provide free one-on-one, -on -one, unbiased, confidential application assistance to help people find the most affordable healthcare coverage for them and then understand how to use it. And we have navigator partners throughout Tampa Bay, uh, BayCare Health System, Tampa General Hospital, Premier Community Healthcare, and Evra Health. So we have over 35 navigators throughout Tampa Bay providing this assistance. Navigators will sit with anyone, either virtually or in person, review all the different plan options with them, compare them side by side, and ensure that the person feels like they're able to make the best decision for them and their families. I want to remind people that we're speaking with Katie Roeders Turner, the executive director of Tampa Family Healthcare Foundation, and we're talking about the Ob Obamacare open enrollment period for the Affordable Care Act's health insurance marketplace. So this is where people can get ins health insurance and possibly very likely in fact, get a supplement. So first of all, who is eligible to get Obamacare, to get healthcare through this marketplace? So pretty much everyone's able to go into the marketplace and look and see if uh, they um, can submit an application and maybe qualify for financial assistance. Usually over 100% of the federal poverty level will see the highest amount of subsidies um, available to them. But even those over 400% of the federal poverty level could get access to some subsidies for their families. And now is a very important time to go back and look and compare your plan options. We have seen that some premium prices have gone up as much as 4% this year. So going back and looking and seeing what other insurance options are available to you could really help save some money in 2023. So I think what you're referring to there is you're referring to people who are already signed up for a plan. The, the price of their plan might be going up and you're saying, go back and, and look again, and maybe there's something that's more affordable that, that might fit your needs. 
Absolutely. And for those who have gone to the marketplace previously on healthcare.gov and seen really high premium prices, now is a great time to come back and look and see to check again, because there is expanded financial assistance this year. And in addition to that, there's been some really exciting policy changes that may let more people get access to the subsidies that are on the healthcare.gov website. We saw that the family glitch got fixed which was um, an issue where families were not able to get subsidies on the marketplace. Um, that's been corrected. So we're really excited to see those changes for 2023. Um, and for those who have been enrolled for many years, always go back and take a really active approach in selecting a plan option every single year. Our guest is Katie Roders turner the Executive Director of Tampa Family Healthcare Foundation. You're listening to WMNF Tampa 88.5 FM. I'm Sean Canan. This is WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, and we're talking about open enrollment for on healthcare.gov. And if, if uh, someone's situation changes outside the open enrollment period, they're still eligible to, uh, to sign up for a plan, even if they miss this, this uh, slot. What does that mean when someone's situation changes? Absolutely. It's a great question. So after open enrollment ends, if there's a major life change, getting married, having a baby, moving, even possibly changes in household income, someone may qualify for what's called a special enrollment period. And that option would be available to people to go back and look at the marketplace at that point to enroll in coverage at that time. So if someone's losing employer-sponsored insurance for themselves or their spouse, that's a great opportunity to look at the marketplace too. So people can apply for subsidies, they can compare health insurance plans, they can enroll in coverage, they can do all that on healthcare.gov, but um, if they want to have that personal touch, uh, remind them again, what, what's the best ways to, to get in touch with someone where they can, they can literally have somebody who's an expert walk them through it, and an expert that doesn't really have any cards in the game. Thank you for that. So we actually have um, we have office locations all over Tampa Bay, either with Family Healthcare Foundation or with our partners at Baycare Health System, Tampa General Hospital, Premier Community Healthcare, or Evra Health. In addition to that, this Saturday we have two enrollment events occurring. So in Pasco County at Centennial Park Branch Library from 10 to 2, navigators will be on site providing free in-person assistance. And then also in Pinellas County at West St. Petersburg Community Library, we'll have navigators there as well. In addition to that, we've got in-person appointments all throughout open enrollment on Saturdays and evenings. We have virtual and telephone appointments. Uh, people can call 813-995-7005, and we'll find the navigator that's closest to the person who's asking for an appointment or the soonest virtual or uh, Zoom appointment, too. I think I'm going to let our, our listeners ask some questions if, if they have any. So let me give out the number. If you'd like to call in and ask a question of a navigator, 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org, or you can text us at 813-433-0885. If you text or email, it'll probably be very helpful if you mentioned which county you're in or or uh, what city you're in, something like that, so that Katie has a better uh, idea of how to specifically help you or answer your question. So Katie, uh, let us, We've in the past, we've heard these things about gold plans and, and silver plans. In general, what are the different types of plans available and how do they differ? That's a great question. So I mentioned that there were six different insurance carriers. So plans may look a little bit different depending on the carrier that you choose. But even beyond that, there are four different metal tiers, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Those usually refer to the out-of-pocket expenses that a person may incur throughout a policy year. So for someone who does have a lot of chronic medical needs, they may be looking at a gold or platinum plan with the lower maximum out of pocket because they know they'll need to utilize that coverage. And for someone who's not a high utilizer of medical care, may be looking at a bronze level plan to cover them in the event of a catastrophic emergency. And for people who are in a certain age bracket, there's even something called catastrophic coverage as well. And we review all of those options with everyone. We may select a bronze or a gold in advance to show them the major differences and then let that help be a guide for people as they're deciding what coverage option they'd like to choose. The healthcare marketplace, the health insurance marketplace that was under the Affordable Care Act that is under, I should say, the Affordable Care Act, some people call it Obamacare, is very popular in Florida. About 2.7 million Floridians enrolled in health insurance under the Affordable Care Act in 2022. 
That's up from 2.1 million last year. I'm getting these numbers from the office of, of a U.S. representative, Kathy Castor. So I hope they're accurate. I, I don't have any reason to think that they're not. But that's a lot of people. 2.7 million people essentially are, are getting their health insurance through what we colloquially call Obamacare. Why is it so, why is it so many in Florida? Well, we do have a lot of people in Florida, and I will say we also saw a lot of people move to Florida, especially as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we saw an incredible increase in people in activity uh, for people looking for health care coverage. And as jobs have changed and people are working gig economy jobs, I mean, the marketplace is a great place for people to find coverage when they don't have access to it from their employers. Um, in addition to that, we expect that there will be continuing to have an increase in coverage um, through the marketplace going into 2023. So I would not be surprised if we exceed last year's uh, coverage amounts. And I think Florida leads the nation. Is that right? That is correct. Florida does lead the nation. The the uh, Florida Covering Kids and Families team at the USF's College of Public Health has been awarded a $12.9 million grant by the Biden administration to help further their work to connect Floridians in the Tampa Bay area to quality health care that works for them and their family. I, I was reading from a press release that came from the federal government. And uh, so that, their, that type of work, the work that is being funded by the feds is helping people here in Florida to get coverage. How does Correct. that work? Yeah, so the Florida Covering Kids and Families out of the USF College of Public Health has a statewide initiative called Covering Florida. Um, so there are partner agencies all around Florida, just like the Family Healthcare Foundation, helping get people access to affordable health care coverage. So here in Tampa Bay, the Family Healthcare Foundation leads the Tampa Bay Navigator Project under that Covering Florida umbrella. So it's great because if we find that they have, someone's got a friend or family member in um, Miami-Dade County, we can contact our uh, Covering Florida partner in that area to make sure that they're getting that same type of one-on-one -on -one assistance from a navigator. I want to remind people that you're listening to WMNF Tampa, 88.5 FM, WMNF.org. I'm Sean Canan, and this is WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. We're speaking with Katie Rodgers turner Executive Director of Tampa Family Healthcare Foundation. And this is a show about Obamacare and how you can sign up for the Affordable Care Act's health insurance marketplace during the open enrollment period that ends December 15th. So if you'd like to ask a question, 813-239-9663, email dj at wmnf.org or text 813-433-0885. I'm going to transition a little bit to Medicaid, and I hope that uh, these are questions that you might be able to answer, but if not, let me know. So that the, the Tampa Bay Times tells us that the... Um, Expanding, if, if Florida were to expand the federal Medicaid program, it provides health insurance to low income and disabled people, that would make an estimated 900,000 Floridians eligible for Medicaid, or more than 4% of the state's population. That includes more than 400,000 people who earn below the federal poverty level, according to the Florida Policy Institute, which is a Tallahassee nonprofit. So uh, moving aside specifically from the health insurance marketplace, uh, if Florida were to expand Medicaid, that would certainly also provide a lot of Floridians with health insurance. Any thoughts? Correct. Yeah, and absolutely. Thank you. It's a great point. So correct. If Florida was to expand Medicaid, it would certainly cover everyone who is in most everyone who's in what we refer to as the Medicaid gap. So zero to 100% of the federal poverty level. There's no federal protection for them through a public health program. Um, states were, um, provided the opportunity during the implementation of the Affordable Care Act to expand Medicaid. Um, so some states like New York, most states actually like New York, California, many others have Medicaid for lower income populations. Um, we do not have that in the state of Florida. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I should say, we're very, very lucky to be in Hillsborough County um, that has an incredible healthcare plan that's offered through um, the Hillsborough County Healthcare Services Department. Um, and that is a comprehensive managed care plan that has zero cost for medical care and also zero cost to be enrolled into it. If someone's a Hillsborough resident and they would like to find out more about that Hillsborough medical plan, how, where can they go? We will also assist with that. So the Family Healthcare Foundation helps with most publicly funded healthcare program applications, um, uploading documents, answering questions, connecting people with doctors, um, really anything we can do to ensure that people are in a program that's getting them access to affordable or free 
healthcare coverage when they're eligible. Um, so we'll help with applications or any follow-up items that they need for Hillsborough County Healthcare Plan. And I should say that there's a link on our website, wmnf.org, to all the resources that we're talking about in this conversation, including Katie's group. So you can go to wmnf.org to find links to all that information. Um, you mentioned Hillsborough. What about some of the other counties in the area? Are there similar programs to Hillsborough's in, in the other counties? Great question. So Pinellas does have a health care plan as well. Um, and then also, in addition to that, Pope County has a health care plan. Um, not a lot of counties in Florida, unfortunately, do have a safety net program for uh, health care services for what's referred to as an indigent population or lower income. But in Tampa Bay, three of the four counties that the Family Health Care Foundation covers does have those, which we're very, very fortunate. Our guest is Katie Roders turner Executive Director of Tampa Family Health Care Foundation. And you're listening to 88.5 FM, WMNF Tampa. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. You know, we do have a question on the phone. So let's oh. go Let's go now to John in Tampa. Hi, John. What's on your mind? Um, I had a question about a navigator. Um, I've had health care coverage on and off for three, three years now, but I haven't been able to keep it for the full year. We would be happy to connect with you and have an appointment to see which what, what we can do to help st um, keep you enrolled for the coverage. Do you, uh, if you were to give us a call at, for a navigator, uh, I was hoping to get that phone number for a navigator. Yeah, absolutely. 813-995-7005. All right, John, I, I hope that, that helps you. Any other questions? No, no, I'm, I'm interested to have a, a conversation with the navigator and uh, see some of my uh, healthcare issues to the end. Yeah, absolutely. And John, if you're in Tampa, we have an in-person office location that we can get you to, or if you prefer to do phone or virtual, that's totally fine as well. Whatever is going to be the most comfortable for you. I think phone's the best for me. Okay, sounds good. We'll look forward to your call. Thank you so much. Thanks for the call, John. And if you have any questions, give us a call at 813-239-9663, or you can email dj at wmnf.org or text 813-433-0885. Thanks for that call, John. Um, I'm going to go back to Medicaid for, for a second. Um, here's one reason why I was reading the Tampa Bay Times this morning, and they have a really great article about um, how Medicaid is being expanded in some of the other states that have had trouble expanding Medicaid, if you don't mind me using that, that language. So each year during the Florida legislative sessions, there are calls to expand Medicaid eligibility, but it, so far it hasn't been expanded because the legislature has kind of pushed back on that. So um, the article that I'm talking about in the Times is about a similar situation in a red state in South Dakota, where legislators opposed expanding Medicaid. But last week, South Dakota voters approved expanding Medicaid in a ballot measure that easily passed with 56 percent. And it's the seventh state in the past five years to expand Medicaid through a ballot initiative. Uh, so um, there are a there is a coalition of groups that wants to put it before the voters in Florida in 2024. But if it gets on the ballot, it would need 60%. And before that, they would need nearly 890,000 signatures, and that might require $10 million. So all that information is from the Tampa Bay Times article today, or maybe they published it yesterday, I'm not sure, uh, about Medicaid expansion. So I just wanted to fill our listeners in since we were talking about me Medicaid just a moment ago. Um, I don't know if this is too political a question for you, but if if uh, Medicaid expansion were on the table, is that something that your group would would support as a way of getting more people covered? We are invested in any way that people can get access to health care coverage. Uh, we are a nonprofit and we um, are, um, are separate from advocacy efforts at this time, um, but we are definitely interested in getting people access to health care coverage through any current or existing health care program that's available to them. Well, Katie, those were the questions that I had, but is there anything that uh, we've left out that, that you could impart on our listeners before you go about how they can get help getting health insurance? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Again, so we'll have navigators this Saturday at two different locations in Tampa, uh, Tampa Bay, in Pasco County in an enrollment event at Centennial Park Branch Library, and then also at West St. Petersburg Community Library in St. Petersburg. 
opportunities to get help though. We are gonna be available all throughout open enrollment, providing in-person or virtual assistance. And then even after open enrollment ends, we are still here to help people find affordable healthcare coverage options. We're here year round, always free, always confidential and unbiased. And I'm gonna give out your phone number again, 813-995-7005. Did I get that right? You got it. All right. And so if you want to call and talk to a navigator, call 813-995-7005. So I want to thank you very much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Katie. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the support. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. And I'm glad you could come on. Katie Rogers turner is Executive Director of Tampa Family Healthcare Foundation. Well, you're listening to 88.5 FM WMNF Tampa we're going to be right back after this short music break. We're going to hear from a Tampa area member of Congress who just spoke at, at the COP in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. When I say just, I'm talking about in the last few days. So we'll hear that speech. So please stay tuned on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe.